Hello, and thank you for joining me today. Today I want to talk to you about the importance of not being unequally yoked together with unbelievers. This is something that is running rampant in the church. Just believers just having you know, these deep fellowships with just anybody and everybody. Now, this is not just limited to marriage. Now, that's a part of it. Obviously, a born again Christian should not be, you know, choosing unbelievers to get married to. Now, it's a whole different situation. If, you know, if, you know, you become born again, at, you know, a after you've married, you know, somebody. That's, of course, a different thing. A bunch about, you know, believers who are already born again and they choose to marry somebody that's not a believer. That's just a recipe for disaster. But it's not just limited to that. I'm talking about even friendships, deep friendships. I'm not talking about, you know, just having a casual acquaintance, you know. And you're not, just, I'm not saying to be rude to people, just to shun people in that sense. I'm talking about having that, you know, that true abiding fellowship, that true yoke together. That is to be between you and other members of the body of Christ, those who are on the same spiritual page, those who are in alignment with the word of God. Because if you are going to be joined together with people, who are unbelievers or even people who say they're believers, but they, you know, they are just disobedient to the word of God. And guess what? Like I said, that is a recipe for disaster. We are not to be yoked together with, you know, people who are just in rampant, you know, unrighteousness. I mean, not, I'm not even, like I said, not limited to just people who, who don't even believe at all, but those who are false Christians. No, we have to make sure that we are, in fellowship with those who are on the same page as we are. That way we can, you know, come together in agreement and be a force that, that will crush the devil's kingdom. And uh, 2 Corinthians 6, 14 through 18 says, Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what accord has Christ with Belial? What part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk among them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. He says, come out from among them. It means come out from among those that crowd of unbelievers, that crowd of evildoers, those, that crowd of people who turn their noses up to God, those who don't believe the word, or those who, who say they're Christians, but they're, like I said, they're lukewarm. They just have no love for the truth. Come out, because that is evil. No, you are to only be in agreement with those who are on the same page, those who are walking in the light. Those who believe the word of God. Like I said, yes, we witness to everybody. doesn't matter who they are. But deep fellowship. I'm talking about true abiding friendship or whatever, you know, if, like I said, if it's a marriage relationship or a friendship. You need to make, you need to make sure that, it's, that that person is truly on the page of the word of God. Not just, you know, saying, oh, yeah, I believe in some God or just any old God. No, you know, the word of God, Jesus he is the way, the truth, and the life. And if people are going to say, well, you know what? There's many roads to heaven. Or, I mean, there's all kinds of stuff that people are saying. Well, then guess what? They're not on the same page as you are. You're not to have these deep fellowships and friendships with those type of people. You pray for them. Yes, you witness to them. as you know, And you minister to them so long as you know they have ears to hear. But if they don't have ears to hear, that's when you have to back off. And you have to dust your feet. And you have to move on not saying that you hate people. No, we're not supposed to hate people. We pray for everybody. Like I said, we witness to everybody, but having a true relationship, you know, whether, like I said, it's a marriage relationship between a husband and a wife or a friendship between, you know, two people, there has to be in total alignment agreement with the word of God, because anything else is just not going to, it's not going to work. All you're doing is going to, you're going to be inviting demons. See, we're supposed to witness to people the light of Christ, not the other way around. They're not supposed to witness darkness. That's why a lot of people think when they come out of darkness, say somebody who was an alcoholic, and then they're, they're, and then one day they see their old buddies, their old drinking buddies, and they're like, oh yeah, come on, you know, and, and you give in to that, and you go out to the bars with them, guess what? What are you doing? You're not showing them the light of Christ. You're letting them witness the darkness, the bondage of alcoholism or whatever it is. And see, and that's how the devil works. 
No, you're not, you know, you pray for them. I'm not saying you can't say hello if they say hi. Yeah, but this is my life now. This is who I am now. I'm not that same person because there are transference of spirits and those demonic spirits that are attached to them will try to, you know, come upon you and to take you back down with them. And you don't want to go that way. No, we cannot be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. In Matthew 7, 6, Jesus said, do not give what is holy to the dogs, nor cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn and tear you in pieces. See, we're not to cast our pearls before swine. It means we're not supposed to slay all the deep mysteries of God, all of these things that, that the Lord has worked within us just out there for anybody to trample upon. Now, if somebody have ears to hear and they want to hear about what God has done in your life, then absolutely. But if they don't, you can't just give it. You witness to them, yes, initial salvation to everyone. But like I said, these deeper things of God, those are to be shared with those who are on the same page, the members of the body of Christ, not just anybody, because all they're going to want to do, though, people who, who don't care about that, they're just going to try to tear you down and talk you out of what you believe to bring you back on their side. They're going to weigh you down. They're going to tear you down. That's what they do. No, we can't let that happen. We have to make sure that th these deeper things of God, these mysteries, revelations, dreams, visions, whatever God has birthed within us, this deep you know, layers of truth. We have to make sure that we're guarding it. We can't just, like I said, if these are pricely, the pearls of great price. Think about it. And we're not just to lay them out there for just anybody to trample upon. No. But if they have ears to hear them, bless God. That will help them out. Yes, that will lead them. But if they don't, then like I said, then you need to back off, move away. But don't think you're going to have fellowship with these people. And think, oh, yeah, well, I need to go and do what they're doing. So, so that's how I'm going to win them. No, the way you're going to win them is by being a witness for Christ, by standing for the truth and not being swayed by the lies of the devil, by the things of this world. So that's the key. The things of this world are what is going to cause you to miss out on your place in eternity if you don't stand upon the word of God. So don't be unequally yoked together. No, you make sure you understand that, yes, witness to everybody. But sharing deeper things of God, fellowship, true friendship is to be with those of the members of the body of Christ, those who are in agreement with this word. In our Proverbs 20, uh, 12, 26, it says the righteous should choose his friends carefully for the way of the wicked leads them astray. Think about it. It says the righteous is those who are in right standing with God, the believer should choose their friends carefully. It means don't just pick any old body. Oh, yeah, that person says they're a believer. They believe there is a God. So I guess, oh, yeah, they're, they're good to go. There's a lot of people who believe in a God, but they don't believe in the true God, the God of the Bible, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who is, you know, God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Trinity. Oh, they don't believe in that. They just say, oh, yeah, there's some God. No, it better be the God of the Bible. Like I said, so don't just, you know, and then there are people who think, oh, yeah, I need to be buddy-buddy with this person over here or this person over there. That way I can win them. So I have to go on their territory. No, 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 no. That is one of the biggest deceptions out there. You know, people think, well, I have to, you know, meet them on their side. No, no. Because what's that going to happen is that that's going to be a temptation that if you're not built up in the Word of God. And believe me, it can happen. Even the people who, who are really built in the Word of God can let down their guard. And the flesh will rise up and guess what? They're back where they where they used to be. Or even worse, they're in some place they never was. And now that's worse off than before. And that's the whole trick of the enemy. That's why it's important that we make sure that we're not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Because it says here, the way the wicked will lead them astray. And that's just, like I said, after that destruction. And those people, if they don't repent and turn back to God, will miss their place in the rapture. And that's that's a sad state of affairs. Because you don't want to miss your place in the glorification of the rapture. God, the full measure of eternity that God has marked out for you from since the foundation of the world. And we need to make sure that we are, you know, in alignment with this. This is not just something that is a, a side issue. Well, you know, God doesn't care, you know, who my friends are. As long as my, you know, my heart's right with him. Well, that's another recipe for disaster. Another way your heart's going to be right with God is to make sure that you are listening to what his word says. It says there, we read it in 2 Corinthians 6. Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Righteousness and unrighteousness, there's no agreement there. There's no agreement, you know, 
between light and darkness. No, you had to come out of darkness, come into the light, come into fellowship with those who are in the light so that you can spread more light to those who are in darkness. Think about it. In James 4, 4, it says, Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Now that is a very blunt scripture. It says, whoever wants to be a friend of the world means who wants to defend the people that are thinking about this. We're in the world, but we're not of it. For the, so those who want to be of the world, who want to carouse with the people of the world, all the dictates of the flesh, all the lust, the pride of life, you know, just all, like they say, what it, if it feels good, do it. Those people, by making that choice, the word of God says here in James 4, 4, they make themselves by their own free will, because God is, he's not going to override your free will. He doesn't want puppets. By your own free will, you make yourself an enemy of God. And those are the only people, you know, the enemies of God who are going to be here for the tribulation. And they're going to see the wrath. Why? Because they chose disobedient. They chose the things of this world over God. And a lot of it is because they just want to, like I said, just carouse with everybody. And I'm not saying, you know, if somebody, you see somebody in the grocery store or, you know, or out, out and about and, you know, you've known them before and you know they're not Christian or they are a, a, one of these so-called Christians that are really not. And they say, hi, oh, how you been? So I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about people who go and they have a total, you know, fellowship with this person. They go out everywhere with them. You know, they go hobnob and stuff. And it's a deep abiding friendship. Guess what? That is just, like I said, it's not according to scripture. And then, or, or maybe people who are, in, you know, who are dedicated to false, you know, religions or in cults or just a, a number of things, perversions and just everything that's against the Bible. Those are not the people we're supposed to make, you know, our friends. You know, we pray for them. You know, we're, we don't hate them. That's another key. Don't get on the other side and think, oh, you have to go and hate these people. No, no. You love them enough to tell them the truth, but you don't sit there and, you know, hobnob with them. Because, like I said, those foul spirits that are attached to them will try to attach to you. And that's something, like I said, you don't want to be in that boat. And then in 1 Corinthians 10, 20 and 21, it says, Rather that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to demons and not to God. And I do not want you to have fellowship with demons. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the Lord's table and of the table of demons. It means, you know, you have to choose. Are you going to be on God's side or the devil's side? If you're choosing the things of this world, the people that are attached and are intertwined with the world, who just believe it, you know, whatever feels good, do it. If it's against the Bible, and just go ahead and do it. No. If you are going to fellowship with them, have that deep abiding relationship, then it says right there, you, you cannot do it. You, you know, like I said, either you're going to choose God or you're going, to, you're going to choose Satan. And by choosing to partake of these foul spirits, and like I said, it's it's the demon. It's not really the person. It's the foul spirits attached to them. Then by default, you're serving the enemy. Even though you may say, oh, I love God, but you choose to be disobedient and you choose to make sure that you're just having these really total connections with these people. That's what the word says. You make yourself an enemy of God. That's why it's important. Do not be unequally yoked together. Like I said, witness them. Absolutely. If they ask questions and bless God, you, you are closer and closer to getting them on to the same page so that you can have that deep abiding fellowship. But if not, then you, like I said, then you need to move away. Yes, pray for them by all means, but don't have these, these total true connections with them and to think that they're your best buddy and they don't even believe what the word of God says. See, it's important that we understand this, people. And then in Psalms chapter 1, 1 through 3, it says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, talking about the word of God. And in his law means his word, his principles. He meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. It shall prosper. But that's the key. That's the person, the person who is blessed, the person who will put their hands to whatever 
they do and it will prosper are those who are not walking in the counsel of the ungodly, those who do not stand in the path of sinners or sit in the seat of the scornful. No, our delight is in the word of God. We are connected to the word of God and we are only in fellowship with those who are also connected with the word of God. See, we're not to have these. See, a lot of people seek counsel and, and just from every source there is and they never check anything out in the word. No, we cannot be yoked together with that kind of stuff. We have to be yoked together with the word of God and those who are in agreement with the word of God. And when you do, guess what? Then you're on your way to victory. Then you're going to have, you know, relationships that are going to be fruitful, not, you know, to tear you down there because there's a lot of toxic relationships out there. And a lot of it is because of people choosing to be unequally yoked together with unbelievers, whether in marriage or friendships. So, so really get take this to heart and, and put this in the forefront of your thinking. Make sure that you're choosing the people that you are having deep fellowship with wisely. Like I said, you don't want demonic spirits attaching to you because when that happens, then it's like, you know, it's a domino effect. And then you're back back where you started. And then that's the devil just got, got you browbeated. And then you are on your way to destruction. Well, you want to be in that pit. No, you want to rise up out of the pit and be in the place of victory because that's what God has for you. Total eternity with him. But you have to make sure that you make the choices today. See, life is full of choices and you need to make the choice to choose your friends and your spouses carefully. You have to choose them according to the word of God. And when you do, guess what? Then you're going to walk in the blessings. Then you're going to have a life that is full of the fruit of God's kingdom. So start walking in that today and do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers, but start yoking together with those who are in line, align with this word. Amen. And thank you for watching.